Hello, this is Mark Sabatella with Mastery Muse Score. In this video, I'm going to give you a tour of the overall Muse Score user interface, the score window in particular. So at this point, I've already created a score, and that score is loaded. You'll be in the same place if you load an existing score. So right now, the focus is in the score window, and I can start actually navigating through my score. And the process for this is exactly like Muse Score 3. It's going to be alt left and alt right to navigate. So if I start navigating with alt right, treble clef, measure one beat one, it'll start reading the contents of the score. Key signature D major, B minor, measure one beat one, time signature four slash four time, measure one beat one, rest measure, measure one beat one, and so forth. We'll talk more about uh actually navigating your score and editing your score in, in another lesson. In this video though, I want to explore the rest of the interface, what is there other than the score itself. And so we are going to use the tab key to start moving through the various different panels and toolbars. So I'm, we're, right now we're in the score view itself. I'm going to hit tab now. Workspace, default button. So we are now on a toolbar that's actually at the bottom of the screen that has the workspace uh, selections where you can uh, create different workspaces with different palette layouts and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and hit the right arrow to move through the different uh, buttons that are on this toolbar. Concert pitch button. So the concert pitch button will allow you to toggle whether your score is in concert pitch or not. Page view button. So the page view button uh, controls the display of your screen, uh, whether it is mimicking the look of a page or whether it's one long strip. Zoom in button. Zoom, zoom in. Zoom out button. Zoom out. 100 edit blank. And, and then a place where you can actually pick the percentage of zoom. So all this obviously affects the visual appearance of your score on the screen. So that's it for the contents of that particular toolbar, which as I said is at the bottom of the screen. Now I'm going to hit tab. I hit tab, let me hit tab again. Main toolbar direction is horizontal panel. Home radio button not checked. So to be honest, I'm not sure what happened when I hit tab the first time, uh, but I hit it a second time. It might have gone to the menu bar. I'm not sure. It didn't announce. But uh, when I hit it again, you heard it say home. We are now on a toolbar that has three tabs in it. Home, and I'll go ahead and hit right arrow. Score radio button checked. Score, and that's where we are now. We're on the score tab. Publish radio button not checked. And then there's also a publish tab. And it announces a radio button because, yes, you can press space to select those tabs. All we're ever going to work with is the score tab. The home tab shows up by default when you first start Muse Score, but as soon as you open a score, you're on the score tab. You'll just stay there. The publish tab will eventually perhaps use if we want to upload a score to MuseScore.com, but we don't actually need it for that. We can just use the, the menus. So we're just going to do all our work within the score tab, and that's what is selected now. So I'm going to press tab to move to the next toolbar. Notation toolbar panel, parts button parts. So this is the notation panel, as it said, and there's a parts button. And if I hit the right arrow, mixer button show slash hide mixer. There's also a mixer button. So uh, these two uh, controls will allow you to bring up the parts dialog where you can uh, add and remove parts to your score and the mixer where you can control the volume and, and so forth. Um, so I'm not going to go into detail on every single dialog. I just want to show you where things are here. So I'm going to hit tab now to go to the next toolbar because that's all that was on that one. Here's tab now. Playback toolbar panel, rewind button, rewind. So we're on the playback panel. There's a rewind button and now I'll go ahead and hit right arrow a few times. Play button, loop playback button, toggle loop playback. Metronome button toggle metronome playback. Playback settings button. Rewind button. So that's all that was on that uh, playback toolbar. It's just uh, basic playback controls. Um, the uh, options allows you to customize some things about the appearance of this toolbar. So I'm now going to hit tab to move to the next toolbar. Note input toolbar panel. Default. Step time. Button note input. 
toggle default, step time, mode. So we are on the no input toolbar, which has a lot of controls on it. And the things that it just read is actually just about one button. This is the no input button. And this is what you can press to go into node input mode and leave node input mode. Now, normally you won't need to use the toolbar for that. The shortcut N will do the same thing. Uh, but the reason why it read as much as it did is this is actually not just a button, but it's a drop-down menu. And it is possible to access other modes of node input. The default is called step time, but there's a number of other modes of node input that can occasionally be useful. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit the right arrow so we can go through some of the rest of this toolbar. You'll see it's all the same uh, buttons basically that existed in MuseScore 3. So I'm going to run through them quickly. 64th note button set duration, 32nd note, 16th note button, 8th note buttons, quarter note buttons, half note buttons, whole note buttons, augmentation dot button to rest button, double flat button to flat button toggle, natural button to sharp button toggle, double sharp button toggle accidental, double sharp. So we went through all the different durations. We went through the, the, uh, the fact that there's a rest button and accidental buttons, and there's shortcuts for all of these things. And so when you uh, learn more about uh, actually entering notes, you'll realize you don't really need the toolbar for any of those things. I am going to continue moving uh, through this toolbar because there are some new buttons and some other things to know about here. Tie button, add tie, add note. So there's a tie. Slur button, add slur. But also a slur button. There was not a slur button before. Uh, but there was often a lot of confusion between ties and slurs because visually they look similar. Um, they're both curved lines. And so there was always a tie button on the toolbar but not a slur button. Now we have both to help sighted users understand the difference between the two. The next buttons on the toolbar. Marcato button, add, accent button, add, tenuto button, add, staccato button, add articulation, so staccato a series of buttons to add articulations. These also have shortcuts, so you don't need to use the toolbar for these. Next, tuplet button. There's a button to add tuplets, triplets, and so forth. Flip direction button. And a button to flip the direction of things. This is like to have a stem. If you have a note with a stem that's up and you need it to be down instead, you'd flip it. Or if you have text that's above the staff and you need it to be below, etc. So these are things obviously that affect the visual appearance of the score. And in most cases, uh, a blind user won't necessarily want to be messing with those positions unless you get feedback from someone about positioning of things. But there's also, again, a keyboard shortcut for that command also. Uh, a couple more commands here. Voice 1 button use voice 1. Voice 2 button use voice 2. So there's buttons to access the voice command so you can switch between voice 1 and voice 2 when you're working on multiple voice music whether it's SATB music in which you want soprano and alto on a single staff or whether it's piano music where you need to have some notes sustained while other notes are moving. Voice The voices are for that. You'll notice there were only two buttons there um, but there's really all four voices that have always been there in MuseScore. We just don't show voice 3 and voice 4 on the toolbar by default because most of the time you don't need them and people typically get themselves into trouble uh, using voice 3 and 4 when they're not needed. If I keep moving to the right, add button. There is an add button to, to help you customize this toolbar. Customize toolbar button show slash hide toolbar buttons. And additional customization options there. So that's the content of the note input toolbar. Now I'm going to hit tab to move to the next toolbar. Palettes radio button checked. So this is a panel on the left side of your screen. And it said palettes, right? And it said checked. There are three tabs on here. So palettes is the tab that we're on right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit the right arrow, I think menu button. All right, that took me to a menu button on the palettes tab. Instruments radio button not checked. So then we have the instruments radio button. So it's calling them radio buttons, but they're basically tabs. There's going to be palettes, instruments, and properties radio button not checked. Properties. So palettes, instruments, and properties are three panels that are all tabs on the left side of your screen. And there's shortcuts to open and close these. Uh, the palettes is F9, instruments is F7, 
properties is F8. So at any time you can uh, use those uh, shortcuts to take you directly to one of those panels. And the palettes panel works essentially the same way it did in MuseScore 3. The properties panel is just a renamed version of what was called the inspector in MuseScore 3. It has a number of settings for things like the size of text or the uh, vertical position of, chord, of a chord symbol or uh, whether uh, a, a given, uh, you know, what the velocity of a dynamic marking should be set to for playback purposes. So a lot of settings that control the behavior of individual score elements are going to be on that properties panel. And so that's what's on that panel. Uh, so that is just lets you choose between the palettes, instruments, or properties panels. So right now the palettes is the one that's selected. So when I hit tab, it's going to actually take me into the palettes panel. Add palettes button. So the first thing that happens in the palettes panel is an add palettes button. That lets you add additional palettes for, so you can customize your palettes. Clef's palette not selected. Uh, now it's going to take me through the various, I hit down arrow there, um, and that is going to take me through the different palettes. Key signatures palette not selected, time signatures palette not selected. So it's going to take me through all these palettes. But I'm going to go back up to the add palettes button for a second. Key signature, clefs palette, layout palette not selected. Oh, actually I guess to get back there, hmm, I'm going to try shift tab. Add palettes button. Okay. Uh, shift tab. But what I wanted to say is next to the add palettes button is a search button and I want to see how to get that. So we're on add palettes and I'm going to try hitting right arrow. Search palettes button. There we go. So from the add pa palettes uh, button right arrow takes me to the search. And now if I press that uh, space search edit blank it brings me into a box where I can search for things. So, for instance, if I want to add a mezzo forte dynamic, I should be able to type MF into the search box. M F. And when I do that, it is now showing me the search results, and I think I'm going to be able to get to them by pressing down arrow. Bear with me while I try that out. Here's going to be down arrow. Clear button. So this is a button to clear the search. Let me keep pressing down arrow. Search edit blank. All right, that just took me right back where I was, so obviously I'm wrong about that. Let me try tab. Dynamics palette contains one matching element, S, not selected. Aha, so that's what I needed to do. After entering your search term, you hit tab, and that takes you to the search results. And then I believe uh, down arrow. Blank. Nope. Let me try tab. Untitled score radio button checked. Nope. So I'm going to go shift tab to get back to that dynamics palette. Dynamics palette contains one matching element. I want to not selected. I want to get to that element. How about right arrow? Collapse button. Menu button. Dynamics palette contains one matching element. S not selected. All right. We're going to try this again. I'm going to press the right button. Collapse button. And now down. MF not selected. So this seems to be the trick. You're going to use, when, when you have a palette selected, you're going to use the right arrow to select the collapse button, then the down arrow to actually enter that palette. It's going to take a little while to get used to exactly how these palettes work in the interaction, but at that point I can hit enter. Dynamic MF. Measure one beat one edit. And it will actually enter that dynamic marking into your score, assuming you've selected something in your score. You have to select something in your score first, but we already had a rest selected, so it just added that mezzo forte to that rest. So when I pressed uh, tab before after doing those search results, you may notice it took me back to my score. So we basically completed the tour of all of those toolbars. I pressed tab to get from to get to the bottom toolbar and then it went to the home score and publish tabs, then it went to parts and mixer, then it went to the playback toolbar, then the node input toolbar, and then the palettes, instruments and properties tab, then it took me into one of those panels, whichever was selected, and then finally back to the score. For MuseScore 4, unlike MuseScore 3, we've implemented some shortcuts to help you move through the interface a little quicker by using F6. So I'm on the score now. If I press F6, 
workspace default button it still takes me to that bottom panel if I press F6 again main toolbar direction is horizontal panel home radio button not checked it takes me to that home score and publish uh, to, uh, toolbar but if I press F6 again note input toolbar panel it, default it step time button note input okay it took me directly to the note input toolbar you might notice it skipped over that one that had parts and mixer and it skipped the playback one visually these are on these are uh, on two different levels it's like uh, one one is a one set of toolbars is sitting above the other set of toolbars so f6 took me to the note input toolbar and then if i uh, press f6 again Palettes radio button checked. It takes me to those tabs that let me select between palettes, instruments, and properties. F6 again. Untitled score not saved radio button checked. Takes me directly to the score. Doesn't jump into the palettes, but skips past them and goes to the score. So F6 is a shorter tour around the interface. And you'll find some of the other windows within MuseScore work kind of similarly, where tab moves you. Uh, directly from one group of buttons to the next group of buttons, but F6 kind of takes you through larger groups of buttons. Within each group of buttons, you're going to use the arrow keys to move between them. So this is the basic layout of the program. I should mention there's also the menu and it's accessed like standard menus. Alt F. New. Bring Control plus N. Alt-F opened the file menu and took me directly to the first entry in the file menu, which is new. So actually, I should read you what the menus are. I'm going to hit up arrow. Quit control plus Q. Uh, okay. Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to hit escape. I want to... I actually... I'm not sure how to get it to read those menus. Um, so let me just try hitting right arrow. Let me hit Alt again. Untitled score not saved radio button checked. Okay. Blank. So it appears that it's not going to just read the menus, so I'm going to tell you what the menus are. The first one is the file menu, Alt F. New. And then Control plus N. And then the next menu Open. is going to Control. be the next menu is going to be the edit menu, Alt E. And then the view menu, Alt V. And then the add menu, Alt A. And then the format menu, which is Alt O because F was already taken for file. And then the Tools menu, Alt-T, and then the Plugins menu, Alt-P, and then the Help menu, Alt-H. And in this alpha uh, release here, it's kind of a test version, there's also a Diagnostic menu, Alt-D. I'm assuming that will not be in the final release. So those menus have all the same commands that they had in MuseScore 3. Almost nothing has changed about the contents of any of those menus. So now that kind of completes the tour of the user interface. And yes, there's plenty more windows. There's the properties window, the mixer window, the instruments window, lots more windows to explore. But this at least shows you how to get to pretty much everything. And then you can explore on your own and hopefully give us feedback.